Roger, with I was watching a clip uh, with uh, what's his name, uh, Stephen A. Smith, and he's talking about how the hell do certain people not belong in the Hall of Fame? We ha- we have to ask the question yeah. because you can't do this without having yeah. a conversation about that and the controversy of it. You, uh, uh, I own. I want to say I don't know how many rookie cards of yours I own. I think I own sixty Barry Bonds PSA ten rookie cards. Right. I own, uh, uh, you know, some of the bigger uh, Ted Williams card, Yoki Berra, you know, all those guys, and Babe Ruth, PSA 8, 1933, Gaudi, it's like a million dollar card. I own a lot of these baseball cards. I love baseball cards. But there's certain guys you're like, dude, I mean, this last Hall of Fame, you got what, 65.2, I think, was a number, some number like that. You need to be at 75, to, you know, with that. And you've commented, you said something very important, I think it was like 10 years ago. Uh, where you said, in our family, we're not even looking at the whole concept with Hall of Fame anymore. Yeah. It's not, you know, the first half of my career was about, you know, generational wealth. I've done that. My family's taking care of second half. I wanted to win. You did that. Great. You're a champion. Your numbers are incredible. And there's a lot more people who are critics and not even fans of yours that would say, this guy belongs in the Hall of Fame. What are your thoughts? You've spoken about this. Probably not something you like talking about regularly, but what are your thoughts about this whole there's plenty of these guys that we feel belongs there. What do you have to say about what they're doing right yeah, now? Yeah, well, you said it, Pat. I mean, uh, after year one, when it became political, we we quit worrying about it each year that comes. You know, uh, writers would call or people would call to say, hey, can I do an interview in this? I go, guys, I've already made my blanket statement. There's nothing really to add. I have zero control over that. Uh, and like you said, I probably get more, uh, all my public appearances, I probably get more people that, that, you know, wish me and say, you shouldn't, I, the only answer you can say is thank you. I appreciate it yeah. because they look bottom line. They looked at the facts and we did it. You know, we went about it the right way. What we did was we stopped not one now that I know of, but since three people from making money off our last name and trying to, and trying to sell themselves on, on that fact. And so, um, again, uh, uh, I can tell you when I, um, uh, General Myers, all the guys when I did this, they called me after the, all the Congress stuff and said, hey, I had to sit in that same seat. It's not comfortable. They were going to try and trick you. There was no facts. I had some guy reading a doctor's report that the doctor never even saw me. I mean, it was a, it was almost like a trap because uh, of what they were doing. I think the guy, wax, I called him Waxhead. He was up there sitting on a stack of uh, uh, phone books just trying to preach to you and let you get your story out and what – things that meant to you more than my dad like you know even even uh the the health risk of it when i got family heart issues in our family and stuff that uh that uh again i i need to write about it one time because i, I want it to be a, a, a if i uh, i told the family i want it to be a great book and i want to give credit where credit's due but i'm going to cut some guys off at the knees too about some stuff that's never really been out there or like i told people if you can read past the third grade uh, you would have known what was going on. And uh, I said, I, I like Jerry Springer, and I like watching this show, but it turned into a, a straight Jerry Springer show. But, again, President, uh, President Bush called me. Uh, the support that I had from people that know, know us and know us as people uh, – uh, you know, that's the way it is. But the Hall of Fame is not going to change uh, who I am as a per- I tell people that's what I did for a living. It's not who I am as a person. But I took it very seriously. But it's not going to change. Uh, are you, being are you, in the Hall is not going to change. Are you an NFL guy or no? Did you did you follow the NFL? Uh, you, do you follow the product NFL or not really? Were you, I mean, I, I root for the guys. Uh, you know, okay. You know. Do you remember Sterling Sharp? Mm-mm. Remember Sterling Sharp? Shannon Sharp's no, no, brother? No, I know, I know okay. both of them. Uh, so, uh, Sh- uh, um, uh one of the golfs a little more. Who, who's on TV now? This uh, Shannon, Shannon right now TV. is on TV. Shannon. So it's Sterling. Sterling's, Sterling's the golfer. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, yeah. 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 Did you did you see? I hope I I, I got to try to find this man. Did you see the speech uh, 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 Shannon gave at his Hall of Fame speech, and how he brought in his brother and what he said about uh, uh, Shannon, Sterling Sharp? Oh, brother. I mean, I I'm out of. Okay, oh, thank God I found it. Okay, I want you to see this. And the reason why I want you to see this, I have a couple different things uh, uh, where I would go. For me, uh, on uh, you know, just play this first, and then I'll give my thoughts. I want to kind of get your commentary and thoughts on this because, you know, what you've done with your 24-year career of staying in the league, that is not easy to do. But play this clip, and then it, 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 it's a TikTok clip. It's not even a um, – it's very emotional, very emotional. On the angle he takes, I had no idea where he was going. If you can turn it's it on. It's his brother. This is his brother. Right, right, right. Go, re- rewind. Is he rewind. older than? 
No, Sterling, Sterling is the is older, older brother. Yes. Okay. I'm so the watch this. Pray. Go ahead. Of 267 men that's walked through this this building to my left, that can honestly say this: I'm the only pro football player that's in the Hall of Fame, and I'm the second best player in my own family. Watch this. Very emotional, guys. Watch. This is nothing. You have to hear what it says next. The faith had dealt your different hand. There's no question. There's absolutely no question in my mind. We would have been the first brothers to be elected to the Hall of Fame. The 44 men and women that I thanked and congratulated early for giving me and bestowing this prestigious honor upon me. All I do is ask. All I can do is ask in the most humblest way I know how is that the next time you go into that room or you start making a list, look at Sterling Sharp's accomplishments for seven year period of the guys that's in the Hall of Fame at the receiver position and the guys that have the potential to be in this building. That's all I ask. I don't say, hey, just do that. The next time you go in that room, think about Sterling Sharp's number for seven years. That's all I ask. See what he's doing? Managing expectations. So for me, he, here's how I see this. Uh, we had Kurt Schilling here two months ago. Okay, You're seeing him give this speech. If you watch the whole speech when he gives and you're seeing Sterling is just like you know, the, the Terrell Davis one time was crying and the Broncos were playing like 13 years ago and his tears were dropping. Do you remember the running back? Yeah, of course. And, and you're like, I've never seen anybody cry like this before. And they're in the Super Bowl. It's an emotional moment. Somebody in freaking baseball, Hall of Fame, needs to give a speech like this and say, there's, there's a bunch of guys. Now you hear the criticism saying, you know, the Major League Baseball doesn't allow Republicans in the Hall of Fame because it's become political and you can't make <laughs> comments like that or this and this and that. Hey, you're, you went to a Trump rally. How dare you go to a Trump rally and yeah. you're doing this and you're doing that. Kurt Schilling, you've been saying all this stuff. You, there's a list of names that you can talk about. The Bagwells, the Reigns, the Hoffman, the Schilling, the U, the Bonds, the Martinez, Musina, Trammell, Smith, McGriff, Kent, Walker, McGuire, Sheffield, Wagner, Sosa. There's a lot of names, yeah. right? These are guys that crush it. I wasn't I was the Army. 1998, and Major League Baseball had just come off the uh, uh, their strike. I think they had whatever the year was, 96 or 94, 97. 94. I don't know what the year was. Nobody was watching baseball. Nobody was watching baseball. Nobody was interested in the product. It was boring. It was dying. Stadiums were empty. Then all of a sudden, these two guys come up, and one's name is Mark McGuire. The other guy's name is Sammy Sosa. Mm -hmm. And every night when we would come back to the barracks, dude, we would stay up till God knows what. We just wanted to see the, you know, yeah, we yeah. just want. It's like, <laughs> what a freaking, you know, rock and roll. They revived. Baseball owes Sammy and Mark McGuire billions of dollars. MLB, you owe those two guys revived the flipping game. So here's where I take it. I watch football. And I look at some of these guys, what they look like. You know, I'm a guy that's uh, tried Primo Ballin. I did uh, uh, the TRT for like five or six weeks. And uh, Clem Buterol, some of the stuff that, you know, because I wanted to be a bodybuilder. And you're kind of like, shit, I got to get into this. And you, you really find out what the bodybuilders are. You're like, oh, shit, I can't do all that stuff. But TRT, you know, you, you got these HGH, some of the stuff that Hollywood's doing it. Football, they don't really get tested as much as some of the other leagues. Yeah. These guys playing football. By the way, if you're not on something and you're getting hit by 350, I'm worried about your neck. I'm worried about your body. I'm worried about what you're doing. So to me, it's not even about the conversation about that. There are guys that gave their lives to this game, that entertained the hell out of fans like myself and increased the product of MLB that belonged there. But I feel like some of the existing guys are playing politics and some of them need to grab their you-know-what and make a 
speech and say, hey, man, when are we going to do make an exception for these guys to get in? I played against these guys. So I know you can't say anything about it yourself because you've already gave your message, and I'm not looking for yeah. you to have a reaction no. to it. All I'm saying is this is my opinion. These are my thoughts. Uh, I think uh, the game, if, if we were to look at baseball in, in a 20-year period and we said, okay, during that 20-year period, no problem. Take Maguire out. Take Sosa out. Take Bonds out. Take Clemens out. Take these guys out. What the hell is baseball? Take those products out. Who the hell is coming to watch the game? Who's trying to see the the temperament, the mindset, the travel, the sacrifice, the nine months out of the You're on the road. You're having kids. You're going through all this stuff. Take all that stuff out. Nobody's coming to watch the commissioner play. They're coming to watch you play, right? Michael made a comment about this in the last dance when they were talking about – you know, they don't come to watch the GM play. They don't come to watch the owner play. They come to watch us play, right? He gave a representation for the guys, and Michael wasn't a guy that made a lot of money in the NBA, when, as in his contract. Yes, last year he made $33 million or whatever the number is, but he was never the highest paid guy. He set the tone for everybody else afterwards. Absolutely. But it was also getting some perspective to say, these writers are voting you in? Who the hell are you to vote a player in? And you ain't played. Well, what what yeah. opinion? So to me it's a little bit um, – Confusing. Uh, I watch. Uh, uh, I watch what they say. The speeches. This guy's not, and he doesn't deserve this. He doesn't deserve that. Uh, hey, writers, you don't have a job without these players. If these guys weren't playing, putting their bodies through what they're putting through, you don't have anybody to talk about. You have a job because they play. So, anyways, that's my uh, uh, that's my rant. I, I, not your yeah, rant. Pat, this is I where I'm at with it. I appreciate your passion. I can hear it in your voice. Excuse me. Uh, you know, like Greg Maddox told me, he was voting for me. Mad, Mad Dog know, knows me as a person uh, and knows the person. And I said, I appreciate your vote, Doggy. But, uh, again, it's not going to change me as a person uh, uh, either way. Uh, I heard, What I heard from you, entertainment, I know we're entertainers. But this was still my, uh, like like you alluded to earlier, my first couple of years has changed the generational difference for my family. Um you know, pay off my mom's bill, you know, get her a car, da da da. And then it was about winning championships. Um, the guys that know me, you know, I hear some asinine comments from guys that have no clue. Like I said, if you could read past the third grade, you would un you would understand what what went down and how it went down. I'm never going to play the victim, I, I, but I am going to stop people from using my name and and spreading lies about me when they say it. I do that when people shit on one of my teammates and said, "Hold up, you you got him on a bad day." See, like being, you know, signing autographs. I signed 50, the 51st person, I'm, you know, I'm an ass. Mm -hmm. and so you can't please everybody all the time. So true. I'm not going to come off phony because I'm trying to get you to like me. And, uh, you know, this is who I am. This is how I was brought up. And I let the people, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I did some inner city work in Baltimore. This, this Baltimore congressman made a couple. Uh, he made them after I was in his office, took 25 photos with his staff and interns, signed all these autographs, and he, and, and he, he was one that brought up, you silver, silver spoon athlete. I go, hold up a second. You know, I, I gave him the quick rundown, very stern about my background. I said, you're reading a piece of paper. You're coming out here in front of the world, and you're getting stats on me five minutes from an intern. And that's what you go off of. You didn't, you didn't take the time to learn about me, who I am as a person, where I came from, or what, what this might be, or you got some other dude spreading lies just because he's trying to get my pocket. So that's what I should have done when I went college. I should have just got my wallet and laid it on the table. <laughs> I mean, that's what that's all it was about. So um, I, I have some great, great friends like uh, Reggie Jackson that are in the hall, and they say stuff all the time. Uh, again, I don't think it makes you uh, – for me personally, I don't think it makes you hit a ball further. I don't think it makes you throw strikes being a control mm -hmm. pitcher. I think it breaks you down and hurts you. A lot of these guys, I think it broke them down a little bit. But uh, – you know, like I said, I, I, I'm not going to get bitter over. It. We just quit worrying about it to come up day after day after day. And like you said, I remember calling Jim Rice, my my former Red Sox, and Jimmy got in on his tenth try. So you either have the numbers to get in or you don't. They made him wait ten years because he pissed off a lot of reporters. I called him and said, "Hey, Jim Ed," I said, "Congratulations mm -hmm. uh, and everything." I said, "But let me ask you, how'd you get better in ten years? Did you go play semi pro ball and hit another hundred homers?" <laughs> <laughs> Did you didn't, I, I didn't I didn't see it or read about it, but so what you know. Uh, so uh, you're either you're either in uh, the first one or you're not. So and, and I and I appreciate your perspective because you're the player. But I yeah. give you the perspective from the players. I, I perspective. totally hear it. The, 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 I'm fans sorry. The fans' perspective. Yeah. The fans' perspective. I'm a voter. 
You know, yeah. it, we're voters. We're not, dude, we don't do what you guys do. I'm a business guy. I run businesses. I've busted my ass the last 20, having many years in insurance. I've done very well for myself. And now we're building a media company. But from the pa- fans' perspective, when you're dealing with a million things in your life, dad's not healthy. This guy's going through this. That guy's going through this. You're having girlfriend problems. You're having kid problems. You're having this. You just want to sit there and just watch a damn game and have everything you were stressed out about <laughs> be gone. Fans are voting for you guys, bro. So yeah. it's a different perspective for us yeah. than it is for you when you're like, hey, what else can I do? I've done my part. I get it. But a fan is like, no, I followed this guy for this many years. That guy needs to be in. So it's it's a different perspective. I get that. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.